Hello, uh, welcome to this short video, uh, which hopefully will give you some guidance for the coursework that you'll be doing for the environmental monitoring workshops for skills for geographers. Um, we'll start with the basics. Uh, you should all know it's a 1500 word individual report. Uh, it's due in at 2 p.m. on Thursday, 21st of December 2017. Uh, so, in effect, that's week 13. So the week after the end of semester. Uh, your key task is to interpret the laboratory results uh, in relation to some key environmental variables. So over the last couple of weeks in the lab classes you've been generating some data so it's just your uh, attempt to interpret some of those um, in this write-up. The, the question, if you like, that you need to answer is to what extent are the properties of soils from the Formby sand dune system determined by distance from the high tide line? So that's the thing that you'd be aiming for. Uh, point on writing style. Uh, write in a, in a scientific uh, format. Uh, no personal pronouns. Write concisely, write uh, tightly. Uh, write as clearly as you can. In terms of content, you need to have uh, four sections. Uh, methods, results, discussion, references. There's no introduction uh, needed for this. Uh, we're, we're, it's a methods-based class, so we'll, we'll, we'll launch straight into the methods in terms of the write-up. The methods, what do you need for the methods? They should be brief uh, and outline the procedures that you've used. So the things that you've done in the lab class, the things that you did in the field, outline those, but keep that brief, keep that concise. Don't waste too many words uh, giving a step-by-step -step list of instructions. Uh, no need for any bullet point list of equipment uh, that you used in any of the methods. Uh, just keep it pertinent, uh, key points, brief, concise. Okay? Think carefully about the information you need to tell me. Uh, nothing, nothing superfluous in there. Because in addition to describing what you did, you're also going to have to provide some kind of critique and review of the methods. So what did you do? Why did you do it? You did it because I told you to do it, but you need to write it up as if it was your idea, uh, why it was such a good method to use, uh, or why it was the appropriate method to use. Uh, refer to other, other studies if you need to, to, to kind of justify and back up your, uh, your use of those methods. Okay, so. Methods is both the description but also review and critique. Uh, the next section then will be results. Uh, and you need to present and describe the results that you've generated in the, in the, in the, in the laboratory practicals. And also you've got, uh, from your field work, you need to, you'll need to say where your samples have come from. So you may need to produce some kind of map. You should have the GPS data, so you should, know, you should be able to pinpoint exactly where those samples have come from, so plot those up on a map. Uh, you may want to include the GPS coordinates and other metadata from those samples, in a, incorporate that into a table, that might look quite nice. You also need to present and describe the results uh, from the, that you've generated in the laboratory, laboratory classes. Think about the best way that you want to present those results. The, the key question is how do those environmental variables change with distance from the high tide line? So you want to present all those variables against distance from the high tide line. I know that sounds obvious, uh, but this is some inter-cohort feedback. This is what previous years have gone wrong on, is that they've present, they, they've, the variables plotted against sample number or something equally daft. So plot the variables against distance, because that's the thing you're trying to investigate. You may need to, uh, and I know this will make me very popular, you may need to use some of the skills you learned in your quantitative methods classes from the beginning of semester that you did with Jason. You may need to test the strength and significance uh, of some of those relationships. Uh, so obviously you're thinking about what you did in the quantitative methods classes, so bring some of that learning uh, into, the, into, this, into this report write-up as well. Okay? But think carefully about how you present that data, think carefully about how you describe it. You're going to have to describe the data in words as well. Keep that description brief. Um, you know, 1,500 words is not a lot of words to play with, so 
uh, try and keep everything as brief and as concise as you possibly can. You need some kind of interpretation of the results. So think about the patterns that you can show uh, and some way of trying to explain those results. We've talked in the various classes, in the lab classes, but also in the lecture about some of the things that we think might influence uh, the soil samples at Formby. Uh, you need to do some wider background reading. There's various uh, texts and papers and things on, uh, on Blackboard. Read around those. What's supposed to be influencing soils in these sorts of systems? Can you see the influence of those factors on our, on our various soil properties? Uh, so in your interpretation, come up with an explanation, but justify your explanation with citations from the literature. Show me that you've really engaged with the literature as part of this, as part of this project write-up as well. Okay? Um, you have to be careful not to try and fudge your results into and, and crowbar your results into the interpretation that you're looking for. You may have an expected pattern, you may have an idea of what you thought you were going to find, uh, but if your results don't show that, don't try and crowbar that in. Okay? You'll be marked on your logical interpretation of the results that you present. So if your interpretation isn't logical given the results that you've presented, you'll be marked down on that. So work with the results that you've got and try and make sense of them and try and provide some sensible and logical explanations of those. Um, the final section then is, is the reference list. Uh, important, um, but I'm sure you, you're familiar with writing up reference lists. Um, use the Harvard system of, of referencing, in-text citation, and then the, the reference list at the end with the full bibliographic references. Uh, only cited sources in the reference list everything in the reference list must be cited. Okay, I think that's pretty straightforward, but uh, don't try and bulk up your reference list with lots of things that you haven't cited, that you haven't read, um, and everything that you cite in the text has to be in the reference list. General things, remember to label or, or caption all your figures and diagrams and all your tables. Number your tables and figures, number them consecutively and in order. Uh, know the difference between a table and a figure. Uh, there is, or there will appear as if by magic, uh, 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 some guidance notes. Uh, these will appear on Blackboard, so you can read those at your leisure. You can go back through the video as well and, and have a look and, and rewind and, and pause and, and as, as you wish, obviously. Uh, and hopefully you'll find these, these notes uh, useful uh, and be able to write up a really successful report. Uh, I'm looking forward to reading them. I saw some of the results that you've got in the laboratories. They look great. Uh, some of you are doing some really uh, diligent work in the lab, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you come up with uh, and some of the interpretations that you can find. That'd be great. Uh, good luck. Remember, deadline the week after the week after, uh, end of semester, Thursday, uh, 21st of December, uh, 2 p.m.